Okay, so uh, hello everybody. I'm Mikel Arteche from the University of the Basque Country, and I will next be presenting our work on unsupervised statistical machine translation. Uh, this is joint work with Cor Calavaca and Eneco Aguirre. So uh, the problem that we are trying to solve uh, in this paper is very simple. Given a monolingual corpus in language one and a separate monolingual corpus in language two, our goal is to do um, some sort of magic that should result in a machine translation system capable of translating from language one to language two. Of course, we are not the first uh, people trying to solve this problem, as in fact there is a relatively large body of work in a statistical decipherment by Kevin Knight's group, among others, uh, which tackles this problem by treating the source language as ciphertext and modeling its generation through a noisy channel model. Unfortunately, this approach uh, was uh, only shown to work in rather uh, limited settings, and in particular, most of the evaluation was carried out at the world level. Uh, more recently, and when I say more recently, I mean uh, this year, uh, two papers uh, by Lampertol and ourselves uh, proposed a new approach uh, for this problem based on NMT that builds on the recent work on unsupervised ordinary mappings. So uh, this new approach uh, obtains promising results in, uh, say, more standard large-scale uh, machine translation settings. Uh, but uh, in this paper, we propose just uh, another approach uh, to unsupervised machine translation uh, that also builds upon the recent work on unsupervised ordinary mappings, but uh, in this case profits from the modular architecture of statistical machine translation. So this new approach uh, obtains uh, big gains over uh, the previous NMT-based approach with improvements between 7 to 10 uh, blue points. So uh, before we get into uh, how uh, this is done, I would like to quickly refresh uh, how uh, statistical machine translation works. So uh, as most of you probably know, modern uh, phrase-based SMT uses a log linear model combining a bunch of different components. The first and most important one uh, being the phrase table. So the phrase table is basically a collection of source uh, target uh, phrase pairs together with their direct and inverse uh, translation probabilities and their direct and inverse uh, lexical weightings which come from the word level alignments. Uh, in addition to that, we also have the uh, language model uh, which uh, assigns a probability to every sequence of words in the target language. And in traditional SMT, this comes from n-gram frequency counts uh, with back of and smoothing. Then we have the reordering model, which accounts for different word orders in different languages. Uh, and this uh, typically consists of a distortion model, which is uh, distance-based, and a separate uh, lexical reordering model. And finally, we have the word and phrase penalties, which simply assign a fixed score to every generated word and phrase, and this is useful to control the length of the output. And uh, given all these different components, the actual translation uh, process uh, consists in uh, finding the combination of phrases from the phrase table that uh, maximizes the combined score of all these different models. So uh, this means that given our monolingual corpus in language one and in language two, all the magic that we need to do is basically learning each of these components. And it turns out that this is easier than uh, what we may have thought at first. So we go uh, one by one, starting with the word and phrase penalties. Uh, as we said, uh, they simply assign a fixed score, so they don't have uh, any parameter, so there's nothing to learn, right? So this is uh, easy. We don't need to do anything. As for the reordering model, the lexical reordering part is uh, difficult because this is uh, learned from a parallel corpora, but we can simply get rid of it and do with a, a distortion model uh, alone at some uh, small cost. Um, as this is uh, parameterless again, uh, there is nothing to learn, so uh, with the simplification this uh, becomes easy as well. Uh, when it comes to the language model, uh, all we need is target language monolingual corpora, and we do have that. Uh, so again, this is easy. Uh, and the only difficult part is the phrase table. So in order to learn uh, the phrase table from monolingual corpora, what we do is we first uh, learn uh, ngram or phrase embeddings for each of the languages independently. We then uh, map them to a shared uh, cross-lingual space in an unsupervised manner. And finally, we use the resulting uh, cross-lingual phrase embeddings uh, to induce our phrase table. And with this, uh, we already have some initial uh, unsupervised SMT system that works uh, already pretty well, as we will see later in the experiments. But uh, we don't uh, stop here. Uh, we try to further uh, improve the system, first with uh, unsupervised tuning and later with uh, the iterative refinement. So uh, this gives us the overview of our approach and now let's uh, see it in a bit more details. So uh, as we said, we start with a monolingual corpus in language one and language two 
And the first thing to do is to learn uh, phrase embeddings for each of the languages independently. So uh, for that purpose, we use the popular negative sampling Skigra model, uh, which uh, basically takes word and context pairs and tries to predict whether each pair comes from the true distribution or some uh, noise distribution. Or more intuitively, uh, given a sentence like this, we can uh, say that a scriptgram uh, basically tries to predict uh, the context of each word in the sentence uh, within a given window. And uh, for each word context pair, uh, we would, of course, update their uh, corresponding uh, embeddings. So uh, this is cool, but of course, in this case, uh, we don't need word embeddings. We need phrase embeddings, right? And uh, for that purpose, we propose a simple uh, extension of a scriptgram that is able to learn uh, these phrase embeddings. So what we do is, uh, instead of just predicting the context of each word in the sentence, we predict the context of each engram uh, in the sentence up to a certain length. So in our case, uh, we go up to bigrams and trigrams. So of course, these engrams uh, will overlap. Uh, that's fine. The only thing that we need to take into account is that for these uh, longer phrases, we will, of course, update their corresponding embeddings, but we are not updating the context embeddings. So this guarantees that the resulting uh, context and also the word embeddings will be the same as those that the original script model would learn. And this way we avoid uh, some potentially problematic uh, uh, interactions that could otherwise arise. So uh, having done this, the next step is to map uh, these phrase embeddings to a shared uh, cross-lingual space. And uh, for that purpose, we use our tool VecMap, which implements uh, the iterative slow learning method proposed in our ACL paper. So the idea here is that uh, given to uh, independently trained uh, word embeddings in uh, different languages, it is possible to map these uh, embeddings to a shared cross-lingual space without any cross-lingual signal based only in the structural information of the embeddings. So the intuition is that even if uh, all we see is a bunch of green points and a bunch of red points, it is possible to align them uh, to a common space. So for that purpose, we can uh, start by simply putting the uh, green points on top of the red points. Of course, this looks like a terrible solution. But if we uh, start uh, moving the green points, we will uh, eventually reach this other configuration that looks much better. And as I was saying, we don't need any cross-lingual signal to see this. It is enough to observe that there is a green point very close to a red point. So we can formalize that as the following demonstration problem. And as I said, uh, our tool uh, VecMap uh, implements uh, an insertive solve learning method that is able to, to solve uh, this problem. So in practice, all we need to do is uh, run the tool and with that, we obtain our cross-lingual phrase embeddings. So the next step then is to uh, induce our phrase table from this uh, cross-lingual phrase embeddings. So uh, as we uh, saw before, uh, the phrase table is a collection of uh, phrase translation candidates. And it turns out that it's very easy to induce uh, phrase translations from this cross-lingual phrase embeddings. So if we want to know what the uh, translation of Chakur is into English, for instance, all we need to do is to take its uh, nearest neighbor in the other language, which happens to be Doc, according to some uh, distance measure, for instance, the cosine similarity. And uh, like several papers have shown that this works uh, reasonably well. But uh, of course, in this case, we don't want only one translation for its source phrase. Uh, we want multiple of them uh, together with their translation probabilities. So in order to, to get that, uh, what we do is we get uh, the 100 nearest neighbors of each source phrase and estimate their translation probabilities uh, by applying the submax function over their respective uh, cosine similarities with some uh, temperature tau. And in order to estimate the temperature, we simply uh, apply a maximum likelihood estimation over the dictionary uh, induced in the reverse direction. So uh, we, 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 with this, uh, we already get our phrase table. Uh, as we've seen uh, before, uh, learning the language model uh, the distortion model and the word and phrase penalties is straightforward. And by combining them all, we already have our unsupervised uh, machine translation system. So, uh, but uh, as we uh, said before, we don't stop here. Uh, we try to further improve the system by first doing some unsupervised tuning. So uh, the idea of tuning is also found in uh, standard supervised uh, SMT. And it's basically uh, tries to tune or adjust the weights of the underlying log linear model so that uh, some evaluation uh, metric in a small uh, development corpus is maximized. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, development corpus needs to be parallel, and we don't have that in our case. But what we can do is we can take uh, a small 
um, monolingual corpus uh, in language one and use uh, the uh, current model uh, to, or this initial model, to translate it to language two, thus obtaining some synthetic parallel corpus, and use the synthetic parallel corpus to tune uh, the model in the reverse direction. And having done that, we use uh, this newly tuned model uh, to translate uh, monolingual mo uh, development corpus in the target language uh, to the source language, thus obtaining another uh, synthetic uh, parallel corpus in the reverse direction, and we use this to tune the model in the original direction. And we can keep repeating this uh, iteratively until convergence. And uh, finally, uh, uh, we uh, apply the iterative refinement, which is basically the same idea, but uh, applied at the more, more uh, basic level. So again, the motivation is that uh, standard supervised SMT uses parallel uh, corpora for training. Uh, uh, of course, we don't have that, but we do have a monolingual corpora. So uh, what we do is we use our uh, initial translation model to translate our monolingual corpus in language one to language two. Uh, this way we obtain a synthetic parallel corpus and use the synthetic parallel corpus to learn a new model from scratch uh, in the other direction. And having done that, we use uh, this new model uh, to translate the monolingual corpus in language two to language one. So this way we obtain a synthetic parallel corpus in the other direction and we use this uh, to learn a new model from scratch uh, in the other direction and then we keep uh, repeating this. So this is basically the idea of back translation, but applied uh, iteratively. So uh, with this, uh, we already have our final model. So now let's see uh, how it performs in our experiments. So uh, our experimental settings are pretty standard. Uh, we use WMT data uh, for French English, German English. Uh, of course, we don't use uh, parallel data for training. Uh, instead, we use uh, monolingual uh, new scroll uh, corpora from WMT. And uh, as for the test that we use, a uh, news test using uh, tokenized, tokenized Blair as our evaluation uh, metric. So uh, these are the results uh, obtained by previous uh, work uh, in these uh, settings. And these are the results obtained uh, by our proposed uh, system. Uh, this is the, these are the results for the uh, initial system uh, without the uh, um, tuning and the refinement. So as you can see, uh, this initial system is already much better uh, than the previous uh, NMT-based approaches. Uh, when we apply the unsupervised tuning, we obtain some uh, further improvements, in particular for French English, and the uh, iterative refinement uh, brings uh, even larger improvements. Uh, and if we compare uh, the numbers of this uh, final system to those of the previous uh, state-of-the-art, we observe uh, improvements above seven uh, blue points uh, in all cases, and up to uh, 10 points uh, in the best case. And in order to uh, put uh, these uh, results into perspective, we can uh, compare them with those of an equivalent uh, supervised system trained on uh, Europal, which is a parallel corpus. And uh, we see that the supervised system is, of course, uh, better, but it's only two to five uh, blue points uh, better. So uh, yeah, of course, there is still a long way to go, but it uh, looks like uh, we are making progress in this problem. So. Uh, to uh, sum up, in this paper we propose a new approach to unsupervised uh, machine translation that builds on the recent work on unsupervised uh, meta mappings, but in this case profits from the modular architecture of SMT. Uh, our uh, experiments show that this uh, new approach works uh, very well uh, empirically, as we obtain large gains over the previous work on unsupervised NMT with improvements between uh, 7 to 10 blue points, um, and this closed the gap with supervised SMT uh, down to two to five blue points. Uh, of course, this is uh, taking uh, your Paul Moses as a reference. Um, the actual state of the art in supervised uh, MT is uh, farther. Um, and uh, uh, I would also like to mention that this work is concurrent with uh, Lampertol, uh, which is uh, being presented this uh, afternoon. And uh, in that paper, uh, Lampertol uh, proposed a similar approach and uh, also sometimes uh, similarly good uh, results. So it looks like uh, this uh, new approach is also working for other people. And uh, as for the future work, uh, we would like to uh, focus more in the semi-supervised uh, settings where uh, we could have access to some small uh, parallel corpora. And uh, finally, we are also interested in uh, hybridizing our approach with uh, NMT. And there is one last thing that I would like to mention, which is that uh, our code is uh, open source. So if you want to train your own unsupervised uh, NMT system, you can uh, simply clone our Git repository and then uh, using it is uh, straightforward. So uh, that's it. Thank you.
Okay, well, thank you very much for this nice talk. We have time for a couple of questions. Please come forward uh, to the microphone. Yeah, yeah. There's one already. Uh, thank you for the great work, and uh, I'm very interested to how you get this idea of uh, falling back to SMT uh, and instead of in your MT. And, uh, and, but it get very impressive results. Um, yeah, I'm more interested to how you get this idea. So, how we got the idea to try uh, unsupervised SMT? Um, well, uh, I mean, um, there is uh, already a large body of work uh, by different authors, and including ourselves, on uh, unsupervised uh, bilingual lexicon induction. Uh, and I mean, it's uh, trivial to see that that can be uh, used to generate a phrase table, and then, uh, as I said, like estimating the other components of uh, phrase-based uh, SMT is uh, easy. So I think that is uh, quite a natural uh, idea. Um, Thank you for your very nice work and the presentation. Uh, I have a question about the sensitivity of the result uh, to the training data, the source of the training data. Like, does it assume comparable corpus somehow? Because news crawl are very comparable from the source and target. Do you think that is a factor in getting good result, or using very diverse monolingual corpus can work? Yeah, um, we don't have experiments on that. Yeah, I think that uh, if the domain of the your uh, monolingual corpus is different, then this approach uh, wouldn't work as well. Um, but uh, we don't have experiments on that. But you don't think it's due to being comparable corpus, right? Uh, I don't know how comparable it is. I mean, it's definitely not parallel. It is in the same domain. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, like uh, f some uh, f uh, further work is necessary to better understand uh, this aspect. Okay, thank you. So I, I had a, a question. So you're um, this sorry, this is Graham Newbig from CMU. Um, do you feel that you're upper bounding your performance uh, by using phrase-based uh, SMT in that in supervised systems we know neural MT does a lot better than phrase-based. So. Do you think this says something about the difficulty of unsupervised MT in general, that you can't do well without phrase-based MT, or do you think uh, this is a temporary thing and we're going to go back to neural MT for unsupervised MT eventually because we know it works a lot better in the supervised case? So I'd just like to know your thoughts about that. Yeah, I think that that's a very good uh, question. Uh, I don't have the answer, <laughs> of course. Uh, but uh, I think that, um, I mean, um, the disadvantages of uh, phrase-based SMT for sup in the supervised game case could be an advantage in the unsupervised case. So this rigidity, um, having a separate language model, etc., uh, uh, is very useful uh, for uh, in the supervised uh, case. But uh, I do think that at least some hybridization uh, with N NMT uh, could uh, improve uh, results. So, yeah, uh, I'm not sure if it will be, uh, I mean, the SMT part will be temporary or not, but I think that uh, in the future we will definitely have uh, an MT somehow. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, have you ever tried the distant language pairs? Um, no, I mean, uh, these are the only language pairs that we have worked with. Uh, what will you expect on the performance on different language pairs? <laughs> um, of course, like, the more distant the languages are, uh, the worse the results are. Uh, uh, will be, but that also applies to our uh, supervised uh, MT. So I don't think that the uh, difference between the supervised and unsupervised uh, case will be that large. But it will be interesting to, to have experiments on that. Okay, thanks. So I think there would be many more questions, but unfortunately we have to leave some time for the last speaker. And let's thank again Michael for this talk. And move to the last one.